The research showed AI improves sales performance by about two and a half, uh, two and a half times. So salespeople in, in average become 250% more efficient, but they split the group into high performing reps. So high skilled ones, and then low skilled ones. So bottom performers. And what they found is that low performing reps, they had almost no benefit of using AI, while high performing reps seen 300% increase. So when you look at the average, it says two and a half, two, two, two and a half times, so 250%. But really what it impacts is high skilled reps. So people who actually know what they're doing, they know how to be human. They can have interaction. They're having a business discussion. They're helping their client. This is what a high skilled rep is. And those people get massive benefit from AI. You're listening to the Sales Today podcast, and I'm your host, Fred Copestake. On this podcast, we explore how sales professionals can develop a modern approach to winning business, the application of virtual selling techniques, how to create meaningful business relationships, and much more. Why not take our free collaborative selling scorecard to see how your sales approach suits today's environment? You'll find a link in the show notes. And welcome to the Sales Today podcast, where I'm delighted to be joined today by Anton Drobozowski and Miro Pukanan. How did I do? Great. Yeah, Great. yeah. These nearly are as good as names ever. <laughs> nearly as good as when I was practicing. Um, but I know the company you're from, Epic Brief. <laughs> I could say that. Guys, welcome uh, to the Sales Today podcast. It's great to have you on um it's great because your mission is superb i loved it when you told me this is to help salespeople eliminate the stuff they hate and do more of the stuff they love what a mission <laughs> um so god I, I, i've got a pretty good idea but tell me what stuff do salespeople hate well they hate updating the crm that's for sure um i think some things that drive make them anxious is they have such desire to be successful and they're they're after they they're they're people who are competitive and they're after performance so anything that gets in the way of that edge that they're looking for every day so the crm is one of those things but there's tons of things that are getting in the way of getting to that level of performance and so you know we'll talk about this today but like we really think ai will free up salespeople to focus on what they love, which is to make more money. Um, but how do you do that? Because anybody can say that, but it's about finding an edge. The best salespeople are always looking for an edge. Every day, I've always looked for an edge. Anton has always looked for an edge. And we think AI is the ultimate edge. So that's what's really exciting um, about what we're building is we think we're building the ultimate edge. And uh, we'll talk about what that means. but. Um, yeah, that's what that's what we're all about. The ultimate edge. I, I I used a phrase the other day which shocked some people. I said, "Yeah, we need to get an unfair advantage." They're like, "What? That sounds really bad." I said, what, why would you not want an unfair advantage? Why do you don't want a competitive edge? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, I suppose when you put it like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the subject of, of today is all about AI because uh, you guys clearly use it. Um, I know you think about it a lot, uh, and so. I mean, the question I've got for you guys to start with, I'm going to put you maybe on the back foot straight away, is that could AI actually lead us into making salespeople obsolete? Could it could it become so good and so competitive that we end up competing ourselves out of a job? Yeah, Fred, I think, uh, well, it is a really good question. I think we, we, we started our journey uh, uh, working with AI and we're not technical people. We used to be salespeople um, and we still are as, as founders. Um, the, we, used to, we started working about a year ago or one and a half years ago with AI and applying it in, in sales. And, yeah. and what we so far learned and we thought a lot about like how actually how powerful AI is and it's surprisingly intelligent. It's surprisingly, it's surprising us every single day we work with it. Um, but the honest answer to your question is uh, intellectually honest answer is that we don't know. 
um, and I don't think that anybody knows is uh, there are there is a scenario where and we'll 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 dive into that uh, maybe uh, in, in in a detail, but there is a scenario where AI can develop to um, to a level where it can have emotions, it can have emotional intelligence, uh, but that will be very close to artificial general intelligence, which is like an ultimate AI, uh, but we're not there yet. So I think before AI can actually have emotions and understand emotions and respond to emotions, um, we, we as salespeople are safe. Uh, they, they, it's not going to make salespeople obsolete. However, there are quite a bit of things AI can really help and augment salespeople's uh, jobs and salespeople's uh, every day. So that's what, uh, that's what we are focusing on is, is making sure that people can use AI to that to get that unfair advantage, to get that edge, but will it replace salespeople or any other profession? Uh, I think honest answer is that we don't know. Yeah, I, I think anybody that professes to know exactly where this is going to go, we can pretty just dismiss what they're saying because they, they don't. We we can't, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, you can only answer what's happening here and now today, and we might listen to this podcast in a year's time and think, "Whoa, <laughs> things have moved so fast." um but i think the idea of augmenting the human I, I like that that makes a lot of sense to me um i mean if we look at different types of selling and how we might bring ai into that that, that might be kind of interesting yeah. um because i know that's something you've talked about sort of transactional consultative solution selling provocative selling we love putting labels on selling, don't we? <laughs> um, and let's start with each of those there. So transactional selling, you know, talk about what, what AI can, can do with that. Yeah, so I think the, the context is really important. Um, so to, to look at all these different types of uh, approaches to selling, like the bigger context is that the salespeople only get 10% of the a buyer's journey. So that's the context that we live in. That's we, we, salespeople don't have the privilege anymore of you know doing three discovery calls uh, like we used to. We're not in control as much as we used to be. So that's a big problem, and that's the context that we live in. And the question that that we have to answer is: Do buyers actually want salespeople there? And so the the big underlying question when you look at all of these different types of approaches to sales is which type of selling um, adds the most amount of value or does it add value we we feel that the type of selling that doesn't add value doesn't create value is more likely to be replaced so when you look at the type of selling that is already being replaced by buyers preferences you know bottoms up you look at diy or transactional selling those are the type of sales approaches where the buyers are already saying, look, I don't need you. I can do this on my own. I would rather, you know, that's why we see the emergence of product-led growth. Like I would rather go and try the tool myself. So the type of selling where you really do need salespeople, like more of a consultative sale, or if there's a technology that's really disruptive, that's new, where the buyer doesn't necessarily even know they have a problem or they haven't even envisioned the solution, that's where sales really can come in and bring all that value and that richness that salespeople and that intelligence that salespeople have to guide and add value and create value in a business. And so when you look at the different sales approaches, you can kind of predict um, that the ones that don't add value are the ones that are most likely to, to be replaced. And so salespeople can think a little bit about the type of selling that they're doing and, and, and potentially position themselves to be value creators as opposed to just value communicators. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah, so like a transactional sale, the salesperson can't add value. It's pointless being there bringing nothing to the party don't try 
you know, and a salesperson that's trying or a company that's using salespeople to do that waste. I think it's then getting interesting where a salesperson could add value, but if they're not, they're pointless. <laughs> not the salesperson, that individual is pointless from the buyer's point of view. That's horrible, isn't it? Imagine as a salesperson being considered pointless because you're not bringing enough to the party. And I think this is where we can then use AI to make sure that what we're doing absolutely is on point and it's helping people to think is 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 really well augmenting the human like i've said already so yeah the consultative solution and provocative sales we can do it so again how can we start to do that you know practically what could a salesperson do tomorrow using ai to sort of bring something into their their approach to do that yeah for us it's it, it really lies in in, in five uh, we can call them buckets or five segments of what you, what AI can help you with or what you can use AI for. Uh, it all starts with where most of the of the people's kind of minds are today is in automation. So there's there's a lot of tasks, a lot of things you can use AI as a salesperson to automate um, your your work. And and one of the examples is is obviously some of the things we do. There are some of the things um, you know you can automate content writing on LinkedIn. There are a lot of people, uh, salespeople who are using LinkedIn in terms of producing content. I think that's that's becoming quite popular. There's a lot of content. Um, then, so that's the first kind of bucket is automation of, of the task, of the routine, tedious work. Then the second bucket is needs, needs analysis. So that's where AI really can, can help salespeople to actually try and understand uh, and remember what the client really needs and help you really be on point uh, during the call and also after the call and, and before the call that these are the needs of my clients. AI helped me to prepare for this call. AI helped me to give information, give intelligence further down the organization. So that's that's the second bucket. Uh, the third bucket is, is problem solving. So there are a lot of if, if you think about sales in a bit of a more meta level, what you're really doing is you're trying to solve problems for your client, whether it's in, be, in between the calls or whether it's live on the call uh, with the client, uh, but really you're trying to problem solve. And AI can be that, that sparring uh, partner for you to actually problem solve together that you don't have to hold everything and think about everything on your own that you can play different scenarios of what, how can, what different solutions. So that's, that would be the, another bucket, the third one. Then the fourth one is, is more high level and that's strategic thinking one. So uh, you can then split it into more organizational, like how organizations can leverage AI, how sales orgs can leverage AI, and then also how salespeople can strategize on a single deal. Some deals are you know, a lot of sales, like salespeople are really like mini CEOs. Uh, you know, some people call, call them quarterbacks. And what really matters is how you strategize your deal. Uh, what are you going to do in, in specific moments of time and how you're going to drive that deal forward. But then that's how you can use AI on a, on a one deal level. And on the second, on the org level, you can always, uh, you know, you can get intelligence from needs analysis uh, and then come up with solutions for problem solving. But then another one, you can start creating uh, strategies or playbooks. Uh, one of the things we talked, uh, you know, on some of the <clears throat> uh, with some people is about how important it is today to actually adjust your process to the buyer journey. That was a lot of I think for the past years there was a lot about talking about how different buyers buy differently and you can't put them all through the same process. But we kept doing that because there was not enough power it was there was just not enough intelligence to pull the amount of data amount of information together in order for you to create different sales processes for different uh, buyers so now that's possible and, and and sales organizations can actually create those strategies create the sales processes in order to feed the specific buyer needs and then the fifth one uh, we discussed it a little bit but that's where AI is not there yet, and there's no practical applications yet. But that's emotional intelligence is 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 you know making sure that you understand how people feel, how you can how you can help them. But AI can't help you there yet. So five buckets for us: automation, automated tedious tasks, 
needs analysis, make sure that you understand your buyer, your customer, you know what they need. Third one, problem solve, come up with innovative solutions to the problems of your customers or this strategic thinking. And the fifth one is emotional intelligence, which is um, not there yet. Yeah. No, not uh, yeah, but certainly un using it to understand people. Uh, some some of the <clears throat> something like humantic AI or Crystal Nose helping you adapt to the personal style. I know it's not yeah. quite emotional intelligence, but you can uh, you can certainly do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's certainly things that we can that we can do there. So, um, okay, so let, let's let's take let's take that. Let's take sort of what what people have available now, if we can. Um, and just think, you know, somebody listening who's thinking, okay, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought I could do that, but you, you're putting forward a, a decent argument. You know, you're not killing me off yet, and I'm going to use this to, to make myself a bit better. What kind of things could they do? I mean, you talked to a high level, you know, some practical yeah. stuff that somebody can take away and say, right, yeah, I'm going to use chat GPT this or something else for that. Yeah. What sort of yeah. things might you suggest? So I met with a, we met with an executive of, of a publicly listed company who was like, oh, well, she was really excited about ChatGPT. And, uh, but then she was a bit worried. I think there are some security concerns about these tools because uh, they're quite open about uh, using them for their own learning and development. Um, but like one of the things that I asked her was basically like, what are you scared of asking it? And then I said to her, she kind of like, like was a bit stuck, struck by the question. And I said, ask that. And that's what I tell people. Just think of that thing that you're scared to ask it and just ask it. And just start trying, start playing around with it. Uh, we had a situation uh, with Anton a few weeks ago where um, we, we, were, we had a sales call and Anton was like, oh, like uh, there's a sales call that's coming up. I don't feel really prepared. And I'm like, let me try something. So I went on chat GPT. I copy and pasted someone's, uh, the client's uh, LinkedIn profile. And then I also copy and pasted like our value proposition, like our, our, like, what are we about with Epic Brief? And then I said, hey, just give me some talking points. I just, I'm just talking to the AI, right? And it gave a really good plan. And it was one of the best calls we've ever had. And so, you know, just be creative, be willing to just try and get started and be willing to be surprised. I think a lot of people are a bit like skeptical and at some people have even tried it. Maybe they tried some earlier versions like chat GPT, like the 3.5 and were like, no, nah, it's not working. But my own experience is that if you just keep trying, keep playing with it, keep learning how to communicate with it. Uh, you might be surprised, and when you have that moment, just reach out to me, and we can talk about it. Uh, because it's it's like really like a moment. You're like, oh my goodness! Like, it's able to do that. Uh, like those areas, like problem solving and strategic thinking. Like I use it even as almost like um like a sales shrink. You know, like hey, I'm really struggling. I'm I can't really articulate what I want to say to the customer or what the customer's saying to me. But I'm using it as a way to just track and unpack, like unpack what's in my mind and talk with it. And it's somehow able, it's able to structure my thoughts and kind of get me past that hurdle I, I might be in. So, uh, yeah, that's what I say to people. Just just try something. And uh, if you haven't, then just try and you'll be surprised. I think that's all, that's really good advice. Yeah, just have have a bit of a play. Be willing to be surprised because it is. I, yeah. I still play and you know jaw dropping sometimes yeah. um I, I i advise people that if you are going to have a play have an idea what the right answer is um with your own human experience because i mean it can hallucinate still a little bit and it tells you things very very yes surely doesn't it this is how it is you think, well it's not actually in real life um so you need to kind of know the answer but when you start to get a feel for that and then how to ask and some of the stuff that you can learn, as you say, about people that you're going to go and speak to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't mind read, but you can get quite deep inside someone's head, which is frightening stuff. <laughs> you're prepared to be frightened sometimes. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely, Fred. I think one of the other uh, practical examples we've been, we've, been, we've been doing quite a bit is 
is around a bit more strategic thinking is when you, you know, when you're in a sale, uh, what you what you ultimately have to do is you have to connect your solution set. You have to basically create a string between the solution set, critical capabilities, initiatives, business strategy, and corporate objectives of your client. It's like a value framework. And then that's what's really driving the deal forward. That's that's basically the foundation of your deal. And that's something you can give to the client and say, this is how you communicate throughout all the layers inside of your organization, because different layers care about different things, right? The C-level cares about corporate objectives, then the VP is strategy, and then down the line, there are initiatives and, and users care about solution sets. So what you really can, can do, and that's very practical, is ask it to create your matrix. So give it enough context about your, about your deal. What is the client? What is the persona? What are you selling? What is your solution set? And then just ask it, create me a value framework. These are the elements of the value framework, like I said, solution set, critical capabilities, initiatives, corporate objectives, and business strategies, and then create me a matrix. It's amazing what it does. It took me on every deal before to do that on every deal. It takes about 45, 50 minutes to even try and think what would I do for that client? It doesn't yeah. matter. No, no and, and you're very right because, um, I mean, I see salespeople that get stuck anyway. They get stuck talking at the level they're comfortable at, you know, either because they don't realize that other people care about other things beyond what they can talk about, yeah, or that they just don't know what those things are. So stay within the comfort zone and keep talking to the people that I always talk to. So just running that and saying, look, these are all the people that are going to be involved in your deal, levels down, levels across. Um, and that's what you're going to have to talk to them about. Yeah. Then take the matrix and then start to put your human intelligence in and go, and how good are you at talking about each of those things? Because you're going to have to. Score yourself out of 10. 10 out of 10 on that one. Yeah, always do that. Happy days. That one frightens me to death. Right. You're going to have to learn about it some way, shape or form. Now, probably <laughs> you're out of something that you just learned already. Or you have people in your organization or, or whatever. Giving yourself that, that kind of more 360, that more holistic sales approach will put good salespeople in a much better position than they've ever been. Faster, like you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I like that one. Value framework. Mm. What else can we do? Come on, let's have another little tip and then we'll kind of come back into the bigger picture stuff. <laughs> we like the tips well, on, this, on this show. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As far as tips go, I, I think I want to talk about tips, but I think the, the more important conversation and, and I'm not trying to get around the tips question. I think it's great, but like when people start playing around with it, because I don't want to, I, I don't want to put the bar so high. I don't want people to think, oh, it's so complicated. Just start, just start playing with that, with ChatGPT. Get yourself a license of ChatGPT. It's 20 bucks, you know, just try it. The thing that for me, that's like so remarkable about using ChatGPT and what Anton was talking about, using it for automation, for needs analysis, problem solving strategy, is that by leveraging this technology, you actually become more human. Because one of the problems I've seen in, you know, now that I'm a CEO of a startup, I get tons of salespeople reaching out to me and I'm on the other end. And I've realized how a lot of salespeople are, from a buyer's perspective, they're terrible. They don't listen. They like, it's like, I am telling them. And because I'm a salesperson, I know what they're experiencing. And I'm telling them in the call, hey, from a buyer's perspective, this doesn't work for me. Like, please listen to me. Don't try to force your process down my throat. And they keep pushing it. But I think understanding, being a salesperson myself, I, I understand what they're experiencing. Why are they behaving in these ways that are not buyer friendly? And I think it comes down from anxiety, from uh, stress, from pressure, cognitive overload that they're experiencing, um, uh, having to manage multiple deals and multiple calls. And so what this AI can do for that salesperson that's feeling drained uh, that's behaving in these, let's call them unnatural ways and not talking to the other human like a human is that it can liberate them to actually, it can liberate their emotional intelligence because it can free them from 
from all that cognitive overload to then become more, more, more human in the interaction, to have less pressure uh, on themselves, on their own co cognitive, uh, on their own cognition, uh, to 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 do all this work that is really sometimes can be quite draining. So that's what I'm excited about. Uh, I'm excited about the future for salespeople, which I think are going to flourish. They're going to be seen for the the beautiful, intelligent people that they are but sometimes they just get caught up in the pressure of the moment and don't realize that the other person on the other side of the room is a human um that has needs and so i, I know yeah your listeners want tips but no um, no that, that that's just a really good tip <laughs> no, no, that, that's, that's, that's a great that's a great piece of advice um and, and very much in line with what, what i'm thinking as well I, I think we might be at a bit of a crossroads and i'd love your opinion on this where there are going to be some people that will go, excellent, we can automate the automation. We can get more automatic, more robotic. We can crank even more out. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are kind of nodding and shaking your heads at the same time going, yeah, there aren't going to be those guys. And that's just going to get worse, noisier, horrible, and that'll get even, well, less response. But what you just said there is that on the other path in the road is to go well actually i can help i can get this to help me do some thinking i can get deeper understanding about people i can go with a better hypothesis i can talk to them more about what they're interested in which is themselves because i understand it better and our conversations are going to spark they're going to be brilliant yeah and i don't know if there's a middle i'm not sure i'd, I'd love to, to think to hear what your guys opinion on that kind of are we forking the road yeah friend. concept is yeah, I think what's 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 really there's a really fascinating um, fact I'm going to share with you. It's um, you know there's a lot of opinions. Uh, we have opinion, you have opinion. I think what's what's what was what really happened and actually happened about two weeks ago is that there was a, a group of researchers, uh, academic researchers, who actually ran a field experiment on forty salespeople using AI they, in their workflow. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because what you just said is that there are the, the, the salespeople really are basically are in three buckets. If you said there's top reps, there's average or good reps, and then there are average reps. And, and it's interesting what they focused on their research is not just only on how AI helps and how much more effective that group of individuals is, uh, by the way, AI, you know, but people who don't know how to do that or they're caught up in the moment or they have this whole stress, they might know what to do, but they're really, what Mira just said, they, they have a lot of anxiety. They're really drained. They can't think because of all the stress. They have zero benefit from it. So what you're saying is don't give up your sales training yet, boys and girls. <laughs> or is that just a, what's a sales trainer heard <laughs> no, <laughs> no serious, seriously though that, that that's very interesting if, if you haven't got a good solid foundation if you've got a basis to build on it's like building a house on sand it's all going to come crashing down anyway if you're good you're solid you understand what good modern selling looks like anyway that's when you're going to lift it yeah. massive but, and, but i want to go back to that basic number yeah, even the average, you know, two hundred and fifty percent better. If you're not doing it, and your competitor is, they're two and a half times better than you. Yeah, potentially. I mean, yeah. I think one besides the numbers, what was interesting from that research is actually feedback from the people, and you can see how low-performing reps were complaining about AI that it makes their work harder. Because they they have to engage in the more challenging conversations, and then high performing reps were really like, "This is the best thing ever. Can we just continue? Can you guys give it more? I just give me more." It was like I, I can I, I'll share with you the research paper. It's really it's very academic, but it's really really fascinating. It's all right. I'll stick it in Chat GPT and ask it summarize. <laughs> um, no, I'd love to see that. Um, yeah, I can. I can imagine. I can. I can picture it because I've worked with all sorts of different salespeople, and I can imagine the ones that you give a tool, you give a technique, you give something, which usually involves a little bit of work, and it's oh no no, I ain't got time, don't want to do it, don't like it, doesn't work for me, not in my industry. All of the above, and people go, this is awesome, this is helping me, I can see the benefit, give me more. 
and I, I, I am going to read that paper because I'm wondering whether, you know, the low performer is going to take the easiest option, borrow someone else's prompt, cut and paste, take the output without really doing anything for it, using it raw, it didn't work. Yeah. Whereas the high performer is, let me understand what this thing is doing and how it works and how I can use it. Mm -hmm. And as you said, playing with it, working out the best way to ask it stuff. It does change. You know, it, it does change. Ask it to be somebody different and the answer changes. All, all that stuff which they work out. Um, you know, the shortcut, the hack, it doesn't, it doesn't work as well. But people who start to get their heads around it will, will, will certainly benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That, that's, that's really interesting. I haven't come across those numbers. Um, okay, so we're going to enhance, enhance the human. Um, we're going to use this stuff to make ourselves better from a position of, uh, of strength. What else do we need to know? What else do you want to share with the listeners? Yeah, I, um, I wrote an interesting, uh, I, I think I had like 12 reads on my Medium article that I wrote about it, but I introduced the concept of Alice, called her Alice, the AI buyer. So that's something that people need to think about, that there's going to be AI uh, augmented salespeople, but there's an AI buyer that's coming your way. And she's very, he or she is very, very friendly. Your buyer is going to uh, ask Alice to go out and talk to all the vendors. And he, she will come to you and say, hey, we're really interested in buying some software and we'll answer all your questions. And then at some point, Alice will go back to the buyer and go, hey, I've talked to all the vendors. I've analyzed their technology all without the human on in the mix. And then we'll ask the, the, the human buyer, do you want to, do you want to buy? No, 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 no. Keep, keep them warm, keep going. And we'll keep that conversation going. And not only that, once you buy the software, once the, the AI, the human buys the software, this AI buyer will make sure the value is being delivered. We'll be there analyzing the software, making sure that it's, it's software, whatever it is, making sure that it delivers the value and holding the organization and the sellers accountable. So this AI buyer is on its way. So on both sides, on our side, we're talking about AI sellers and, and making us better, but that's going to be an interesting challenge, I think, for sellers as well when Alice shows up. What are we going to do? Uh, is it going to be like an RFP that we're going to say no to? Like, what are we, how are we going to react to this AI buyer and how are we going to problem solve around it? And that's a future where obviously us as a business, we, we, it's like an arms race. We're on the side of the sellers. We want us to at least have the edge, you know, but it's coming. And so we really, um, yeah, where do we win? We win in the human in the humanness, in adding real value and having connection with buyers and building relationships, um, yeah. building true partnerships with our with our sellers and yeah. buyers. And so, but that's that's another interesting. If you wanna if you wanna think a few years ahead of what the world is gonna look like, AI buyers on its way. Well, well yeah, you know, I like to think that humans won't lose this ability to collaborate that we have it's why we are the species we are because that's what we do i think sometimes we try to do things not to do that but you know buyers and sellers we should be trying to work together for mutual benefit you know and, and they're using the ai we're using the ai everyone's using ai to make that collaboration even more effective uh, but like you say even in the here and now today as we're talking salesperson not using it but a customer or a customer's organization that is to try to solve their problems and you're turning up and you can't even solve a problem for them that they've sorted out, which is what they're trying to do anyway. Yeah. Which is why it's so difficult to stop talk to customers because they do want to sort themselves out because they're perceiving that salespeople aren't adding value. Um, yeah. But when we're both using it, we can really elevate the amount of, a uh, uh, a value, the co collaboration, cooperation that we're, we're, we're putting in place. So yeah. I think one of the things uh, maybe Anton can touch upon this, we haven't talked about, we've talked about the sellers, the account executives, talked about the AI buyer. We've talked about different types of selling. 
Uh, I think maybe we, if we can spend a little bit, because we've also been thinking a lot about how this is going to impact the leaders. Mm. Yeah, please. That's important. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting, from the, from the sales leader's perspective, as you know, uh, Miro was a head of sales. Our head of sales is, uh, I think today, if I'm honest, I think sales leaders have an impossible task. Um, it's a situation where, which can be very much summarized in a very simple sentence. They're all asked to do more with less. And that's an impossible task because over the, what is the sales leaders or revenue leaders job really? It, it, it really relies in three aspects. You have to increase volume, increase conversions, and shorter sales cycles. That's, that's all your job is really about. That's how you get more revenue, right? And, and for the past 10 years, uh, 10, 15 years, the way they achieved those goals, so the way they achieved those, uh, those objectives is uh, by hiring more salespeople, uh, by uh, hiring consultants to train, to increase the quality of those people, or invest in, in, in training. And then also they, and they really, when cycle, sales cycles were not shortening, you kind of start understanding, or conversions are not increasing, you kind of start understanding the product might not be there and you don't want to have that product conversation. It's, it's always the it is, so you just leave and find yourself a new job. <laughs> uh, right now, in the, the, there's an econ economic environment where those levers are not there anymore for a lot of sales leaders. You can't hire more people, you have to lay people off. You can't afford, you don't have the budget, you don't have the resources to hire people, to train people you have. And then you can't afford to leave <laughs> because it's really hard to get another job. So I think where AI can help is, is, is in those elements, is, is increasing volume through automation. That's definitely a thing AI can help with. You just have to use it correctly, not just you know, blast emails for volume. Uh, increasing conversion, that's that's a lot about increasing the quality of your salespeople, which is all about training and then making them do what they really love, what they're the best at, like right? freeing up their time. And then when you're talking about the product, I think there is technology like AI. Uh, it can really help you have that conversation with the product and come to the table with actual insights, which you don't have to spend months in, in gathering the market insights, which your buyer, your sellers are hearing from the market. Now you can actually come back and say, these are the needs, these are the pain points. Here's hundred clients who are asking for this. Why are we not building that feature? Why our product, why it's not even on the roadmap? How are we going to deliver the product? because this is the raw information I get. Here's, here's the insights, right? So I think to sum it up, uh, sales leaders have an impossible task at hand, which I think five years from now would have been really, really impossible. There was no lever, there would have been no levers for you, but right now AI introduces that lever for you as a leader. Uh, and if you use it correctly, if you, if you engage with it and you learn and you educate yourself of how you or your organization, how your reps can start using it, I think you, you'd be able to solve that problem. Brilliant. No, I, I think you're right. It's, it, it's such an exciting time to be in sales, isn't it? <laughs> Generally. Yeah. yeah. I, I read one in my second book. First line is, what a time to be in sales. Yeah. Now you can read it with different tonality. Yeah. What a time to be in sales. <laughs> what a time to be in sales you know um i'm the second and it sounds like sounds like you guys are too very much so uh, yeah this is uh, just to point like i've been in sales for the last 10 years and what i've seen is this like there's been like i feel like uh, i feel there has been so much discovery around the science of sales it's been demystified and so now there is there's a more scientific understanding of sales. And now this technology is coming together at the same time. It's a very exciting time to be, to be yeah. in sales. No, oh, definitely. Definitely. How do people get in touch with you guys? Cause uh, I suspect that some might be hearing what you're saying, be interested in what it is you're doing. They certainly probably want to do less of what they hate and more of what they love. Um, what's the best way to get in contact? 
Yeah, I think we're pretty active on Nero on LinkedIn. So anybody can follow us, can connect, send us a message, ask us a question. Uh, our website is epicreep.com. Come there, have a read. If you're interested, sign up as a, as a user or as a tester. Uh, we prioritize account executives. Uh, we welcome other uh, personas, uh, sales leaders, or other people who are interested, but our priority is to build the tool for AES. So AES, you're very much welcome to come in and, and test the tool and, and build it together with us. Brilliant. I'll, I'll drop your uh, LinkedIn um, links. Yeah, yeah, LinkedIn links into, into the show notes, plus, plus a link to, to Epic Brief. Guys, thanks for coming along. I mean, really interesting. We, we could talk about this stuff well into the night, I know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank yeah. you very much, Fred. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Sale Today podcast with me, your host, Fred Copestake. I hope you've enjoyed what you heard today. If you did, please get in touch and hit subscribe. And remember, you can take the Collaborative Selling Scorecard for free to check out how your sales approach works in today's environment. You'll find it in the show notes. <laughs>